Great. So hello, everybody. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the show and are excited to meet the wonderful Rachel Dixon, who's very kindly giving us her time tonight to speak with you all about directing this um, pretty phenomenal show, if you ask me. Um, so I'm just going to start. I'll give a little bit of background about Rachel, and then I'll ask a few questions, and then I'll open up the floor to you all to um, either you know raise your hand or in the chat however uh, we want to do it you can ask some questions and, and I'll get to each one of you so um, Rachel is from Houston which um, we love Houston I'm from Houston uh, Northern Sage loves Houston. Um, I'm from Houston amazing so many Houston people <laughs> Shelby was from Houston if you all met her so we're we have lots of love for Houston. Um, so she is currently the Bold Associate Director at the Ensemble Theater. And um, Rachel is truly an artist, a theater artist who is just, just reading your resume, you just blow me away in every single aspect of theater. She's a director, a playwright, an actor, um, a producer, truly does everything. And is part of our bold circle that Carol has started and had very kindly came here and directed, well, not came here, she did over Zoom, uh, but came here <laughs> um, metaphorically to direct Dutch Masters. Um, so welcome, Rachel. Thank you again so much. So excited to talk oh, to you. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess the first question I would, uh, wanted to ask you is, um, when did you like first encounter this play and like what were your first impressions by it before starting the directing process? Sure. I was approached by Carol. So I had, I was not familiar with the play prior to her asking if I was interested, you know, when pre-production starts, well, it, it would have started long ago and then COVID happened and all of that. So our pre-production time was not as long as probably Northern Stages normal <laughs> uh, <laughs> process, but that was fine. Um, she asked if I was interested and you know, can I read it first? And I did. And so that was my introduction to it. And then of course, doing my own bit of research along the way, like all good artists do, right? You go find out about it. Um, I did <laughs> that work. Uh, and then I had to read it a couple of times because you asked what was my first impression. So I got to about page 30 and that's about halfway. So that's right before he goes to the apartment. And I was like, why would anybody want to watch this? <laughs> that was really my thought. And I was like, okay, am I going to finish reading this? Yes, I am. Finish reading because that's what good artists do. You go to the end because you never know what you might learn or see or you know, what your experience might be, because, right, we know that the beginning of the play, hopefully there's a journey that happens, and so you got to stick with it. Even if you're like, I'm bored out of my mind, stick with it, because you never know where the end will land you. So I did, and uh, when I finished, I thought, ah, this is tough. I'm still thinking about wh what is the playwright trying, to, why, like, uh, wh what was he thinking? And so that's when I did some of the other research to find out about Greg Keller and to see what some other productions had done. And then I read it again before I called her back. And I said, you know, I, I'm interested in this piece because, and I didn't tell her quite in these words, because I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, as I, as I say, I don't want to sleep with this play for the next, however long, you know, weeks it's going to be. And that's because it is challenging me. Not only is it challenging me to want to stay with it, it was challenging me to explore their relationship in a way that I, intimately in a way I hadn't had to do before in, in terms of them being male, I'm not male and um, the race dynamic and it not being spelled out and yet it's spelled out. And what is that? How would I, how would I direct this ah, challenge? I don't know if I want to do this. And that's when I said, okay, I have to do this. Because I mean, that's the way you become the better artist is you do the stuff that's hard. And I went into it feeling like it's going to be a little hard. So I'm sorry. No, absolutely. That, 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 was, that was my journey to it. And I'm so glad I did. I mean, I, yeah, what a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, a great uh, lesson, I think, just for all of us to take away about doing things that seem scary or unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. um, so because we talked a little bit before um, the walk, everyone went off to watch it about 
the race dynamics in the play being at, sort of at the forefront of the themes that are discussed and that being a big reason why Carol wanted to do this play now. And so I'm wondering for you, like how, why and um, how do you think this play resonates, especially right now in light of the um, increasing Black Lives Matter movements and the ongoing police brutality? Well, I think it uh, highlights some of the subtextual things that happen that we don't uh, we don't like to see, or maybe we see, but we don't address. And so I think in, in our in our real world, with the whole with the Black Lives Matter movement and the, the particularly the United States coming to understand like its contribution to the race dynamic in a in a bigger sense. And so I feel like this play kind of kernels it all down to these two characters, and the themes are indeed there where it's it's underlined. It's there, and, and there are single moments when it's big and highlighted and present, but then it's underlying again. It never goes away. And so I feel like it it parallels what are just like right, good art, art reflects life, life reflects art. That it it does that uh, in in the way that he has written it. So yeah, I think it speaks speaks to the Black Lives Matter movement and in, in Northern Stages um, desire to do it. You know, one of the things as I was approaching the play and when I said, I asked Carol, can we have some conversation before I commit? My, one of my questions was for her, do you want this to be a reflection of the stereotypes that you, this play could be done with just that? Like we play out all the stereotypes that we as a people have about other people, whether that's brown, whether that's wealthy, classism, what, you know, whatever that is, we can put them out there and the play will could live just fine. Be a different play than the one we did, but it would live fine. Or I said, do you want the complexities of these human beings to be what drives them? And race happens to be one of those one of the pieces of the complexity, right? Because we could play the stereotypes and they are black and white young men who are, this is what's happening. Or it could be, these are two young men and this is their lives, their complexities, let's highlight those. And my asking very directly was, Northern Stage is a white community. I could present the stereotypes and that would open the door for conversation in a different kind of way than presenting the complexities. What is it your goal? What is the goal? <laughs> And I said, I would rather direct the complexities because that will make the directing job that much more interesting. And she said, well, yes, of course, the complexities. And then after I thought about it, a couple of more reads. The stereotypes are there because we are human and we open our eyes and see these two young men. We hear the train. That means something. We see shorts. That means something. We see a backpack. That means something. We hear this new music. That means we, we automatically come with stereotypes. We don't need to play them on stage like ever right? <laughs> uh, not if you're doing a your good job as an actor or director. Uh, and so the, the long answer, Kerrigan, I realize, but I, it, I, I feel like, you know, when we look at the complexities of, of characters, because they are human beings, once you embody them, they're no longer characters on the page, right? They become part you, part care, then it becomes what life is especially if you're being honest. And I think the actors did a great job of being honest in the moments that were presented. And those are moments that are very real for our world. So I feel like it parallels the world very nicely. Long answer. But... No, no, thank you for the long answer. We appreciate it. Um, and also I appreciate the you and Carol deciding to go that more complex route because I just think it makes it all the more um, pertinent and necessary and current. Mm -hmm. um, my last question for you before I open it up for everybody else is um, how was directing over Zoom and what what was it like working with the actors and what was it like not being in the room? <laughs> you saw I wanted to cry when you said I was in here, but I, I did not get to cry. I wanted to cry. I really did. There were days I'd have to go, hold on, please. I'm going to mute for a moment, take, take my camera off because I just, it hurt my heart to not be there, but I was really grateful to be in the process. So Zoom directing was challenging. Um, 
you know, what are some of the most important things you experience on stage as an actor with other actors, right? It's breathing with them. It's they move this way, you counter that way. It's, it's how the air changes when someone comes in the room and has a disposition from their day, they brought it with them. And now I'm in your space. How does that change the air? And so I, I, I couldn't feel any of that. And that made me really sad. And they couldn't feel any of that either for the first two weeks, right? We were just, we were just basing it on text. Now, fortunately, this text had a lot to, to harvest. So that helped a whole lot. Um, but Zoom was, was challenging. And then when they got to be in the room together and I could not, I, it was gut-wrenching. It really, <laughs> it really was. Um, but they managed it beautifully. And they, you know, I was watching and I'm going to have to call Alec and uh, Carol and Kate and say, now, did y'all come back and rehearse when I wasn't watching? Because there were things in the play. I was like, oh, they did that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a good moment, you know, that I don't remember seeing. But that's because I was on Zoom and because of how editing can make things resonate differently. Or we did, you know, unlike theater, right, we're going to do it. I'm going to give thoughts about that doing. We're going to do it again. I'll give thoughts about well, this. We would film a section. I might give thoughts. We might. Well, Carol and I, because she was in the room and um, my intern was also in the room. Jackie was in the room. So they were like my eyes um, and ears because sometimes I would go, that, that's not right. That doesn't look right. doesn't sound right. And Jackie would be like, yeah, that's what we did. Or that's how it was. Or that works better. <laughs> um, but I was uh, very sad, but in watching it tonight, there were so many nuances and interesting things that, that were captured. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't recommend doing a show over Zoom. It, not in that way anyway, right? Because they did come to the, if you, if you were never going to be in the room together, that's one thing. Like I watched Eric in a um, uh, Zoom greeting and they were fabulous, right? Because you use the the dynamics of Zoom to make those moments live for Zoom. But we were trying to make moments live for live and then we came together and put live together for two days. So it was very, very interesting and challenging. And that they handled it, the, the whole team was so great. That's what made it work. That yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would have never guessed that it was rehearsed over Zoom. Uh, yeah, they did a good job. <laughs> Um, so now I'm going to open it up to you all. Um, do you have any questions? Go, you can, no, can for those of you. Recognize you. <laughs> for those Jackie, of you. Jackie, my interns, Jackie. Oh no, you're not my intern, Jackie. The other Jackie. What's Jackie's last other, name? Uh, Burn. That's Burn, right. okay. Let me get it right. <laughs> Let me get it right. All right. Um, if you're on camera, you can just go ahead and, and raise your hand like that. I can call on you. Um, or if you're not, you can raise your hand on the raise hand button on, uh, if you go up to participants and go to the bottom, you can um, click that. But it looks like Flynn, you have a question. Go for it. So what I want to know is what were the major challenges that you faced um, with directing during a pandemic, like with the blocking and only be, being able to have those very short in close contact moments. Yeah, I, I would laugh about that the whole process. Okay, we can only be six feet because I was like, oh, in this moment, you're gonna, no, you're not, six feet. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so there were so many moments where I could just imagine them really being like right here, right here, and they can't. Well, back it up, back it up. Okay, now how do we make it live from here to here? So that was a challenge, but it was fun to figure that out. Um, just being on Zoom during the pandemic, knowing that they were upstairs and downstairs from each other once they came to Vermont, um, they lived above and below. So they could hear each other through the floor, like moving furniture and stuff. And they could even hear each other delivering lines. Now it was a little delay because it had to come through the floor. But sometimes they would hear the person above or below them before it would come through Zoom because Zoom has such a big lag sometimes. And so it was way weird. They would be like, and I'm thinking, why are you pausing? But they were like, because I'm, he hasn't said his line on the computer yet. <laughs> uh, so that was interesting. Um, the isolation, you know, even though some of us are more introverted than others, we're still artists and artists thrive on connection to like, 
that's part of what art is, right? Is connection to other. Now, whether that's other art or other people or whatever, or a text. So I could see quarantining wearing on them a little bit. Now I live with kids and a husband. So I was here with people all the time. And my reverse was, can I ever get a minute, right? But I could see it wearing on them a little bit to be alone like that. Um, and so rehearsal sometimes had a thickness to it that would be challenging to, to work through. And then just remembering to prioritize the human and not the script. I think some moments I did better than that, better than others, um, particularly Flynn during a quarantine, right? Prior and, and any time is what it really should be. Any time we should prioritize the human beings and the stories will happen. And I mean, prioritize the actors. Like, what is going on with you today? How are you coming to the process? What you bring with you? You know, what are your thoughts about this? We spent a lot of time talking and that was good. And I think that was even more important during quarantine so that we could have that connection to each other. Um, and, then, and then the next layer is of course, the, the human beings in the script were more important than it should be blocked just like this. And so that was another challenge during quarantine is we worked it out separately, looking at each other on our devices. And then when they got in the room, it was like, okay, that doesn't work. Or, that moment isn't working, you reading, or that moment works really well, but we didn't catch that in the room. So yeah, not, <laughs> plenty of challenges. And then Flynn, that I'm here and y'all are all in Vermont. That was a challenge, made me sad. So yeah. Did you read, did you see any challenges? Did you see anything in the film that you went, huh, challenge? Well, you know that they couldn't touch each other and couldn't touch the same items. like. So with cigarettes, they had to be separate ones, different hats, you had to cut and all that to make, that was quarantine challenged. But what do you think? Um, I have never seen Dutch Masters before, so I didn't know if it's usually only those two people yes. or if there's other people like in the background. No, because I don't know. I would imagine most theaters don't want to pay for those other people. So no, it's probably always just those two. <laughs> yeah curious about that and we had already been told about the um incredible camera work that had to be done to so that the actors wouldn't touch the same prop so I already knew that that was a difficulty and I was just curious if there were any more that didn't really shine through during the mm -hmm. well probably between that and they were always six feet apart unless they they could be in the same bubble for 10 seconds or less so if you notice they I don't even know that they, they may have crossed paths a couple of times, but not very often because when you cross, you got to keep on moving six feet. So I, and I, in watching it, wasn't distracted by that. I thought I was going to be like, ugh, but you know, it was like, oh, okay, that's all right. Yeah. And I do think that their kind of separation that showed between them actually worked pretty well because of their interactions and their relationship with each other so it didn't seem awkward it just seemed normal for that right. situation but couldn't you just see them Flynn sitting on the couch together like two old buddies right next to each other at the in the, you know in the park but we could never do that <laughs> so like stand to your chair um but I hope that it read that they became more comfortable with each other and all that even though they couldn't be close so, yeah. yeah good question mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Skylar, go for it. Um, so you were talking about how you you got like thirty pages into the into the script into the play, and um, uh, sorry, I'm I'm kind of just repeating what you said. You were like a little maybe unsure um, about what it was trying to say at that point, and I'm just wondering what uh, as you as you kept going and as, as you um, discovered what um, what the play was really trying to say. What was the biggest shift in your perspective, or what? Like, what was your what were your main thoughts, uh, Skylar? Because this is a learning moment. I'm gonna say it like I thought it just now. I was pleased to see that it was not the, the typical black male story. Uh, I was pleased to see that their relationship had depth because they were young men and often young men, black or white, doesn't matter, 
aren't written with as much depth and complexity as they should be. Men in general, but okay. Uh, then again, there's the argument that there are more male characters, blah, blah, but young men. I, I, so I was that, that was my shift when we got to a space where they, they had more to them. Uh, you know, the challenge in that first 30 pages, Skylar, is that um, you have no idea why. Did y'all know why they would? I'm, I'm like, okay, come on, Steve. Why are you still in this conversation? Because anybody else would have been like, dude, I'm out. I'm going to sit on a different place on the train. I'm, you know, I'm like, why is he still here? And then I'm like, okay, Eric, if you want something from Steve, go on and get it, would you? <laughs> Come on. We can all have more life. So that was what I was doing. I was first lady. I didn't, I, I, I did not. Why? Motivation. Intention. And then how do I, how do I get an actor? How do I find all of that for an actor to be able to live in it so between me and the actors we figured out okay intention here how does it how do you get and it it was a, a joint effort uh which was what well, it was easy because they're smart but um yeah the 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 turning point was okay they're complex that's good they're not the typical that's good I, it still took me going to look and see okay playwright because i was like okay I did not pay attention to the fact that it was Greg Keller. All I remembered was Keller. <laughs> and so after I read it the first time, I went back to look because I was wondering, is it a male? What race is the male? How old is the male? You know, once I knew it was me, like there were so many factors that would have informed what the play was about that I, I that investigation became important. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. So at what point did it turn for you? Or did it, you know, look, I'm making an assumption, Skylar, that it was on a road and it needed to turn for you. But like, was there a point where things changed for you in some way? Yes, I think, I mean, I was drawn in definitely from the beginning. But I think, um, uh, as I was saying, sort of the, um, the intention of the player, like um, what it was really getting at, um, became much more clear as... Um, Eric started to reveal his motivation and um, his backstory with, or how he um, had a connection to Steve. Um, but I was definitely, so yeah, that, that was a turning point, yeah. Mm, okay, okay. And then I was like, oh, maybe that's an easy cop out. Cause now we got this big old thing that is like, this is the reason why, you know, <laughs> like what, what, you know, who's, who doesn't rewrite the play sometimes, right? But I wonder if there was a way to have all of that ambiguity and not have this such a big concrete thing and yet it still resonate with people in a way that makes you go, oh, hmm, what, you know? Um, but I appreciated that big concrete thing at the time that we were working on it, so, yeah. Great, I think we have time for one more, one more question to, to round out the evening. Adrian, go for it. Um, so do you know how it was emotionally on the actors, especially with Corona happening and how secluded they were and then the whole racial, racial justice um, part of the play and how Black Lives Matter movement is happening right now? Do you know how it was for them mentally? I, I am not on the, was not on the inside of some of their conversation. I know that the two of them had some chats about their journeys uh, with, with uh, race in America. I know the two of them had some conversations about their training as actor and how it informs their relationship to the play. Uh, what I was a part of <laughs> because of quarantining I think there was a big frustration on the part of, of one of the actors. And because we weren't in the room together and the process was just so uh, quarantined. I don't know, I can't think of another word. You know, we had that distance. And so that was very frustrating for one of them. Just like, I, you know, I don't want to, can we just, you know, that kind of like tension you could just, and then he'd stop us from rehearsing, look, you know. Uh, which was okay. I understood that it was about not being in the space together, not being able to breathe together. So that separation was, 
was intense uh, in some moments. And I think that helped them in to inform about the separation that these characters are having and how they could use some of that. Um, so I think emotionally, another piece about this, and so I'm still on one of the characters, another piece about the emotional thing, not necessarily related to quarantine, but Black Lives Matter and the whole race was, I don't wanna go here. I don't want the character, I don't want, I don't want to have to go here. And so we had to say, you, you have to go here because that's where the character is. And it's not gonna feel very good in this state of the world we're in because that means you gotta leave from in here and go out there and take that with you. And what you're, what, where the character is, is true for so many people who are uh, in a similar space. But just because you're acknowledging that it's true and I'm, y'all, I'm being real clandestine. Can I just say it all right? Can I just say it all? You, uh, the white guy is the bad guy. He made some bad choices. They're both made some bad choices, but you know, he didn't want to go to the space of, do, do people really do this to each other? Yeah, they do. And you got to do, you got to be willing to say, oh, I don't know your mother's name. It wasn't important, you know, but it's okay. It's not you. And so I think emotionally that was tough. And the fact that we're in quarantine and now that we're in the room together, I have to really live in the discomfort of how I'm interacting with you. And as for Eric, um, just he, what, he had the discovery along the way, multiple times, a couple of times that Eric was alone. And he said, you know, that's, that's what this quarantining feels like. I am alone. And that was very hard for him. And, and then for me to be able to process because I'm not in the room with him. And so all I could do was like lean into the camera a little bit <laughs> and let him know we're here, you know. Now in the room, I would give him his space. I would sit nearby. We would breathe together. That can change things. So great question. Uh, a challenge, I think, for both of them in their own ways. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Rachel. This was wonderful. It's you so lovely awesome. to hear from you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, when this group is doing something that I can watch, let me know, Eric, so I can, you know, click them up. And, Sounds uh, good. We've got some of this group doing much ado about nothing. Oh, good. And, and another part of the group will be doing She Kills Monsters in uh, uh, January. And we'll have a audio play for you about portraits of the pandemic so oh i love you have to know portraits of is this portraits of the pandemic group uh this is some people some in, of them are in that yes i watched that when you all sent the link before you know in this and i i was like this is awesome i was quite riveted at your work and their work was it was delightful it, i mean it wasn't delightful because it was painful but it was delightful <laughs> you know what i mean it was a delightful pain so well done, those of you who participated in that. And She Kills Monsters is quite a fun, thick piece. I look forward to seeing that in much ado as well. Um, at wonderful. Well, thank you all and have a wonderful night. Thank you.